You're listening to Insight from Capital Public Radio. I'm Jeffrey Callison. You can download previous editions of Insight. Find our archives at capradio.org slash insight. Our Carmichael writer has a new picture book out called Nugget on the Flight Deck. It's about life on an aircraft carrier. Author Patricia Newman joins us. Patricia, welcome to Insight. Thank you for having me. Who's Nugget? Nugget is a first tour aviator, the new guy on board the ship. Quite a young uh, new aviator. Uh, well, in my book, yes, he's a young new aviator. Usually they're not quite so young. Uh, tell us a bit more about Nugget. Who is he? Is he based on anyone real? How old is he? He's not based on anyone real. He's a fictional character. Um, although the book is, is based on nonfiction, um, I wrapped it around a fictional story to be more um, accessible for four to eight-year-olds. Um, Nugget could be any boy or any girl out there who loves airplanes. Why did you call him Nugget? That is what a first tour aviator is called on board an aircraft carrier. That is the real jargon, and um, that's what he would have been called had he been stationed aboard this aircraft carrier. What gave you the idea to write a picture book for children about life in an aircraft carrier? It must be the first of its kind. I think it, I think it is. Um, I started with Jingle the Brass, which is a picture book um, that uses a lot of railroad slang that was popular during the Age of Steam. And I had such fun writing that book that I started to think of other professions that might have also had jargon associated with them. And um, I happened to have a, a college friend who was stationed aboard an aircraft carrier, and my neighbor across the street is, or was, a, a U.S. Air Force pilot. So I had two ready-made sources of information, and that that kind of clinched the deal. My guest is Patricia Newman, author of Nugget on the Flight Deck. It's a picture book for children. It's about life on an aircraft carrier. She lives in Carmichael. Did you talk much with people who, like the ones you mentioned, who, who actually spent time on aircraft carriers? I did. I talked quite a bit with them. In fact, that's my favorite kind of research to do, is talking to people who've been there, who've done what I'm interested in writing about. Um, there's a certain amount of information that can be gleaned from books, library research, internet research, but the fascinating stuff comes from the people who've actually been there. Now, your book is meant, as you said, for four- to eight-year-olds, um, and, and some of what happens on or what can happen with people on an aircraft carrier um, is quite disturbing and, and dangerous because, you know, these are military people who sometimes have to fight in war. How did you decide that that was something you wanted to, to write about for young children? And how did you decide how to introduce them to this general topic? I stuck pretty closely to what it's like to live on board an aircraft carrier and train on board an aircraft carrier without going into the real reason that we have at aircraft carriers out there. Um, when a child says to you, I want to be a fireman when I grow up, or I want to be a police officer when I grow up, or I want to be a pilot when I grow up, he's not really thinking about the dangers that are inherently associated with those professions. He's thinking about the machines, how cool it is, the speed, the, 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 the trucks that he gets to drive, whatever it is. Um, and that's what I found appealing about the whole idea, is, is how um, a, a child would look at these machines and look at this language that's associated with the profession and just say to himself, this is cool. Were you able to spend any time in an aircraft carrier yourself? I have visited the USS Midway down in San Diego, which is an aircraft carrier museum. I've never been aboard a functioning, commissioned aircraft carrier. Now, you wrote the words and the story in the book, but you didn't do the drawings. As someone called Aaron Zenz did those. How did you work with an illustrator? Because you wrote the story and you created the characters, so you probably had an idea in your head about what Nugget and the others look like. Did you pass that on to the illustrator, or is that just the illustrator's job to figure out what they're going to look like for this book? My job as the author is to write the best text that I can that conveys what I have in my head. Um, I submit the manuscript, which is basically a double-spaced 
page or set of pages to my editor, and the editor is in charge of choosing the illustrator. I really don't have any say in who my illustrator is. So it's always a, a big surprise when I see the illustrations or the, the, um, the sketches for the first time. Um, I trust the process. It, 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 you, when you become a children's author and you're not also the illustrator, you have to learn to trust the process. So do you feel a little nervous when the, the first sketches arrive? A little bit, only because the first sketches are they're anything but detailed. They might be an oval for a head or, you know, a, a shapeless mass for the, the uniform. So I really don't know what the illustrator is thinking in terms of details. So that makes me a little nervous. But once I start seeing the final sketches develop into paintings, Aaron uses, actually Aaron uses colored pencil, um, I become less and less nervous as the process goes on. Did you get to see things about the drawings as they evolved you know oh, that doesn't look like nugget um i do remember making one comment i thought aaron had made nugget look a little too old so um i made one comment to my editor i never was allowed to talk to aaron now now to. i talk to him i see now okay. i talk to him now that the book is printed but during production i was not allowed to talk to him um, so I said to my editor, I think Nugget is a little bit too old, and that was changed. My guest is Patricia Newman, author of Nugget on the Flight Deck, a picture book for children. Do you get a chance to speak to many of the children who read your books? I visit a lot of schools, and there's nothing better than um, speaking to an assembly of children and having somebody raise his hand and saying, Mrs. Newman, I've read your book 17 times. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, do you ever think about writing for adults? Um, a lot of people ask that question. Um, I never think of writing for children as a, 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 a step, a stepping stone to writing for adults. Writing for children is brings its own set of challenges. I have 32, sometimes 40 pages in the case of Nugget to create a character, create a well-developed story, and create um, um, each, make each page inter interesting enough that a child will want to turn the page to see what's on the next page. Children are very unforgiving. If they don't like the first page, they'll close the book and throw it aside. Adults will give you a chapter or two. So I actually feel like what I'm doing is in some instances more challenging than writing for adults. Patricia Newman is at the Citrus Heights Barnes & Noble this Saturday afternoon from 1 to 3 with her book, Nugget on the Flight Deck, a picture book for children about life on an aircraft carrier. It's meant for four to eight-year-olds. Patricia, thank you so much. For